Between the ages of six to ten, we lived in a mobile home on the lake. The first paranormal experience I ever had was there, and it was with our motion-censored hall light. It was a pet-free household, and I was the only child, and my parents' room was on the other side of the trailer. The light would flicker on and off, and then in the morning time, it wouldn't cut off. We would press the button that could override the sensor and cut it off, but it just wouldn't work. I was watching TV while it was storming when my mother and I heard a loud boom. My mother got up to look out the window, and once she got to the window, our power cut off. So I looked toward the TV and I saw what looked like a red devilish mask on a red body sitting next to me from the reflection. I quickly turned to look next to me and all I saw was my mom still looking out the window. Should be noted that it was midday and still bright while it was raining. The last experience I've had regarding this house was the other night. I had a dream that I was in my bathtub in the old trailer and my head was repetitively pushed in and out of the water while the bathtub was stretching. Ironically enough, I woke up drenched in sweat at 3.33 in the morning. I live in a very rural area in southeast Georgia. I have two dogs who are friendly and they love to play. One clear sunny day, I had the dogs out in the yard when a strange dog showed up. It was running all around the yard with my dogs chasing it. All three of them seemed to be really enjoying their game of chase and it lasted for about 15 minutes. Then, the strange dog just ran full speed into the side of my home and disappeared into it. They were running at top speed and my dogs had trouble stopping before they slammed into the side of the house themselves. They stayed in that immediate area searching for the other dog. It actually appeared that they were frantic in their search, whining and sniffing while running in circles. I went to see what happened to the dog since I'd witnessed the whole thing standing about like a hundred feet away. There's no place that dog could have gone. No damage. No hole under the house. No sense to it all. That dog just vanished into thin air. I'd never seen that dog before and haven't seen it since. Maybe a ghost dog. What do you guys think? Roughly eight years ago, during spooky season, I was staying with my boyfriend's mom and her baby daddy at the baby daddy's house. My boyfriend was away in another town visiting his grandmother and friends. My boyfriend's mom and his two sisters and I were watching a scary movie when we somehow ended up in a conversation about how the house we were in had a history of being haunted. 15 year old me absolutely loved the occult and witchcraft, especially Ouija boards at the time. You see where I'm going with this, right? I proposed the idea of making and using one, stupid idea I know and everyone was all in and up for a spooky October evening. I don't remember what the session consisted of regarding questions or answers, but there's a very good reason for that. About 15 minutes into our session, we get to talking about our creepy experiences. That's when suddenly, a woman's blood-curdling scream erupted from the downstairs basement, echoing up the stairs to the living room where we were. The baby daddy was asleep, mind you, and even if he hadn't been, there was no way in hell that he could have produced such a terrifying noise. Not a chance. The scream was not a regular scream. It sounded like a few different things. In one way, it sounded like a woman was being brutally stabbed to death and was in excruciating pain. I don't sound specific, but I'm being serious. In another way, it almost sounded otherworldly, like just straight up demonic. It reminded me of what I would imagine a banshee to sound like if I had to hear one. We all panicked, all four of us heard it. It sounded so clearly like a physical person, 
so much that we were scared that someone was actually really down there. So the mom went to check to make sure there wasn't. We said goodbye and ended the session. To this day, I'm still unaware if it was either a lost spirit calling for help or if it was a dark entity making its presence known. I even speculate still if it's possible that the entity that made that sound could have been a banshee. For as long as I can remember, I've had an interest in the spiritual world and thought it would be cool to communicate with the dead. So back in 2014, my mom was browsing around the local Facebook buying and selling groups when she came across someone selling a used Ouija board. It caught her attention because it was a glow-in-the-dark limited edition and she decided to buy it for me. She'd remembered playing with one as a child and thought I'd enjoy it too since we'd talked about it in the past. My mom then contacted the seller who would stop by and drop off the board. It was one of those stormy, gloomy, almost spooky days when the guy came to the house to bring us the board. As soon as I saw it, I got a bad vibe. Once the guy left, I told my mom, I don't feel safe using that. I want to do some research first. My mom was surprised at my reaction because before this point, I'd been interested in playing with it. I ended up surfing the web, watching YouTube videos, and hearing many stories, most of which were bad, which made me feel uncomfortable about trying the Ouija board. My mom ended up packing it away in a box on our porch, where it stayed for many years. This brings us to the spring of 2022. By now, I'd gotten really interested in the paranormal. I learned a lot more about Ouija boards and how dangerous they could be. So I reached out to my mom and asked, Remember that Ouija board you put on the porch years ago? I think you need to get rid of it because I heard that just having one in the house can bring on bad luck and negative energy. It's weird because since moving to this house in 2014, we hadn't had a lot of good experiences. My mom replied, oh, I actually got rid of it last time I reorganized the porch. So let's fast forward to summer. I'm back at my mom's house. I go to school in a different part of the country, but return to her house in the summer. Once back there, I started hearing strange stuff in my bedroom, like whispering. I thought perhaps it was just the air conditioner, but it honestly sounded like voices and I never heard anything of the sort until that summer. I also sensed that the Ouija board was still in the house. I decided to go look for it on the porch. That's when I see the Ouija box tucked away in a clear storage bin. I grabbed it and brought it to my mom. As we looked into the box, we noticed it was different. The board and the box looked like they were brand new. When we opened it, the planchette was still in its own separate wrap. This was not how we remembered the board. When my mom got it from the guy it had been used, the box even had some wear and tear and the planchette wasn't wrapped in anything. At this point, we're both weirded out and just want to get that thing out of the house. I'd heard that Ouija boards can come back and change if you don't properly dispose of them. For the time being, we put it in our backyard because we weren't sure how to get rid of it. Properly, that is. We wanted it out of the house, but leaving it at our property wasn't a smart move on our part. Bad things started happening. The first thing was when my father got in a minor car accident. This was the only time in his life he'd been in an accident in all of his 45 years of driving. Next, our basement flooded. Town sewage backed up into the basement. Nasty, I know. Before this, we had a dry basement, which had only gotten wet once due to someone leaving a window open during a bad storm. The third thing was when we had a handyman come over, and the guy almost fell through our basement stairs. He wasn't hurt, but it really scared my mom. 
She ended up getting the stairs replaced, even though it was very expensive. Then another thing happened to my dad, which proved to be the scariest of all. There was a big fire in his apartment building. Multiple units destroyed, including the one right above him. Thankfully, no one was injured. His unit did suffer some water damage, so he was forced to move out. It would take at least six months for renovations to his apartment, so he couldn't move back in right away. One final thing happened while the Ouija board was still in the backyard. My mom and I noticed we didn't have any hot water, so we went to the basement and discovered the water heater wasn't working. We tried to reset it, but couldn't get it back on. A repairman came to check it out and told us that the unit had overheated. Fortunately, there was a safety setting that shut it off before it got dangerously hot. He then explained that the water heater's thermostat was faulty, or it should have never gotten that hot in the first place. If the safety switch hadn't shut off, it could have blown up. We were so lucky. One thing I noticed is that even with all these close calls, no one was harmed. It was almost as if someone or something was watching out for us. After that last thing happened with the hot water heater, my mom and I agreed that we needed to get that Ouija board off of our property. It seemed to be bringing us bad luck and we were worried things might get even worse. Even my dad was having bad luck, although my parents were divorced and he'd never lived in the house with us. My mom decided to get rid of the board. She planned to bring it to the town dump. She had separated the board from the planchette so she could toss them in two different garbage bins at the dump. As my mom was driving to the dump, she noticed something odd. At a neighbor's down the street, there was a hearse parked in the driveway. A vintage hearse from the 1970s. She texted me about it and I said, That's weird, but people do buy old hearses sometimes. My mom then disposed of the Ouija board at the dump and headed home. On her way back, she drove past the neighbor's house and saw that the hearse was gone. There was only a dumpster that had been sitting in the driveway. My mom had never seen a hearse in the neighbor's driveway before that day and hasn't seen one since. The neighbor's driveway was too short for both a hearse and a dumpster to be parked. Later that week, my mom and I were at Barnes & Noble and decided to have a coffee at the Starbucks there. Guess what we saw when we dropped off our serving tray? Tucked away near the milk and sugar was a Ouija board. I know they sell them at Barnes & Noble's and I guess someone could have left it there but it still totally freaked us out.